This is a U-Haul moving truck and not a motorcycle. Now that we have the obvious out of the way, why am I in a U-Haul moving truck and not on a motorcycle on a channel that is all about motorcycles? Well, it's because we have to move everything out of the storage unit that we've been using as a garage for five of the bikes and sometimes the Miata today. Okay, that was kind of a lie. We don't actually have the moving truck because we have to move out of here. We have the moving truck because we just picked up another bike. But you guys won't see that until next video. We do actually have to move out of the storage unit today, so let me explain. It's been great having this storage unit, but as you can see, we got one, two, three, four, five bikes in here. Sometimes the Grom is in here, and anytime it rains, we have to put the Miata in here. So insert picture here. As you can see, it gets really crowded really fast, and we need a lot more space. In a perfect world, I would obviously get a real garage, but I still haven't been able to find one. So the best that we can do for now is upgrading to a much bigger space, actually at the same storage facility. This is just a measly little 10 by 20 unit, and today we're moving all of the bikes over to a brand new 10 by 30 unit and as we take them over one by one I'm gonna fill you guys in on the upcoming plans for each of the bikes for the new year oh and that box right there is actually a hint as to the new bike that I got but I don't want to give away too much you'll have to stay tuned until the next video for the big reveal for now let's start getting the bikes moved over okay so I actually haven't even seen the new unit yet pop that bad boy off and let ourselves in welcome for the first time to the new big old 10 by 30 unit. I don't know what that is. Oh, a new lock. I already have one, but thank you. It looks like somebody stored some sort of a BMW or a Harley there. <laughs> Get it? Because of the oil stains. Get it? They leak. I can't really say anything because my Rebel 1100 was leaking, but that's besides the point. Check it out, dude. There is so much more space here than I was expecting. Oh, and that light comes on too. Hell yes, yeah, so that should be better for filming. Is that, how does that happen? There are boot marks on the ceiling. I feel like maybe that's one of those things you're better off not knowing the answer to the question, but uh, oh yeah, and I also, I just got a fancy new camera to improve the quality, but as you can see, I clearly don't know what I'm doing because it's making everything dark. But I am so stoked for this. This is so much more space. It should uh, help us out a lot until we find a real garage. Um, so welcome, let's get the bikes moved over. Okay, so bike number one getting moved over is the SCL 500. I think I've said this before, this is slowly, not slowly, quickly becoming one of my favorite bikes that I have. Biggest plan right now, I don't know if you can see, it doesn't have an exhaust on it. And you might be questioning why that is, because I had the Vance and Hines on there and I said I loved it, and I did. I kind of still do. There's hope to rekindle the relationship, perhaps. But uh, the truth of the matter is, it started rusting out from the inside out. And I reached out to Vance and Hines, I said it was made out of mild, steel and not stainless, which would explain it. And that would also explain why we had that orange stuff dripping down from uh, where the muffler meets up with the header ever since we installed it. And that's because come to find out it was actually rusty water that was dripping out. So that is off and we actually have a new exhaust for it already. I can't say too much, but that will be two or three videos from now, maybe? So super excited for that. I also have something pretty big planned for it. I don't wanna say exactly what, but something I haven't seen anybody else do yet, and it's kind of costly. Other than that, I just gotta really ride this thing. I love it so much. Um, I really just love the style of that bike, and it's quickly becoming my favorite, so big stuff coming for that, very excited. I can't get used to where this camera's pointing. And the next bike up is the XR150. I feel like you guys haven't seen this in a while. I think not since I put the Yoshimura exhaust on. This bike is kind of the bike that I've ridden the least lately, I feel like, which is a shame because it's so much fun, but for some reason it just kind of always goes to the back burner. I feel like lately the focus has been a lot on kind of customizing the bikes and working on them and making them my own. And the XR, I feel like the aftermarket just isn't really there for it yet. So there's not a whole lot to do, so it gets kind of ignored. Um, I do have to rejet it now the exhaust is on, so I'll be doing that in the future. And then I also have a new header pipe coming in. Like I said before, this is still black because it's stock, and then this is like the tan gold color. So I do have one of these getting Cerakoted to kind of match. And if it doesn't match too well, then I'll probably just wrap it with uh, exhaust wrap or something. Um, but other than that, I feel like there's not really, oh, I do. Okay, so Yoshimura is working on a fender eliminator. So I'll have a fender eliminator coming in as soon as they have that ready. I don't know, maybe some like more like knobby off-road tires for it. Maybe some bark busters, I don't know. And next up, we got the Navi. You guys know, one of my top favorites. 
Was that a gunshot? <laughs> what the hell? Uh, but yeah, the Navi, you guys know, is one of my favorites. There's just something about a mini moto that I love. And the Navi really is the embodiment of that. I love it so much. It's so cheap. It's so cheap to work on, to maintain, that I don't see myself really ever getting rid of this. It's so convenient for like grocery runs and just around the neighborhood because you twist and go. It's just, I love it. Plans, I think we're probably going to do some LED swaps, which of course we'll have to do the AC to DC uh, swap as well. Definitely a new rear shock. I'm not pleased with that rear shock it's a bit too soft so the rear shock is like the only thing excuse you other than that i'm really happy with it i don't want to throw too much more money at it i just want to enjoy it and use it as kind of like the grocery hitter hooligan machine that it is And then we have Nina's Rebel 300. Uh, as for that, I don't know how much I'm allowed to say about her plans. I'm probably better off letting her do the talking, so I'll link her channel below. Komodo Vlogs, make sure to check that out, and I'll make sure she does an update video soon. All I will say is that she got her license last year, and it seems like she's starting to outgrow this bike. And by starting to, I mean she already has. Whether or not she's gonna keep it and upgrade, or whether she's gonna sell it and get something else, that's for her to tell. Only thing I can say is I do have some work ahead of me uh, replacing an O-ring. I say work ahead of me as if it's like a lot, but it's not. I noticed about a month or so ago that it has a very small oil leak. There's a sensor right there and the O-ring, it seems like it's just not seating. It's like doing maybe one drip a week or something like that. Not anything serious, but when we do the next oil change on this, I'm gonna go ahead and swap that O-ring out. Other than that, it's running like a top. She's loving it, but like I said, any kind of like updates or plans, I'll leave that to her. I can never get over how good it looks though. Sometimes I forget how well she's done with this thing, dude. It looks so badass, doesn't it? And of course you know we got the big daddy, the OG, the Rebel 1100. If you've been around for a while, you know this is the main bike, the love of my life, but we kind of fell out of love a little bit last year and she got pushed a little to the side because I dealt with this whole oil leak fiasco. The oil leak itself shouldn't have been that bad, but I dealt with two kind of shoddy shops that uh, made me realize that I'm working on all my own bikes from now on, which normally I do. I don't know why I did it then, but regardless, she's back. She's better than ever. We do have probably a water pump repair or replacement, I should say, coming up. It is still leaking a little bit of oil and coolant from the weep hole of the water pump. If you ask Honda, they say that that's normal, but for me, it's a little bit more than I'm comfortable with, so we'll probably swap that out just to be safe. And we wanna make sure that we're safe because we have a lot of trips coming up with this thing. I wanna ride the crap out of this thing this year to kind of make up for lost time last year. And it may not seem like it because we have so much done to it already, but we have a lot more work coming on it. The bushings are starting to wear out on my shocks. Uh, I don't know if that's like a recurring thing with the these shocks or what. I honestly love these shocks. Maybe it's just because we ride two up so often, who knows. But the bushings are starting to wear out a bit. So Burley Brand sent me some, uh, what is it? I guess neoprene ones, like heavy duty jumps. So we'll swap those out and we should be good to go. I'm still thinking about getting the seat recovered all black because I'm not a super big fan of the white stitching on that. We'll probably do some steel braided brake lines throughout once we figure out exactly what size risers we're going with. We got the Power Commander in there, the Dino Jet Power commander. I don't know why I'm coming around this side as if you'll be able to see it. All you'll be able to see is these wires coming down here, whatever. And we do plan on getting the bike dyno tuned, so we'll see what kind of power it's making and get a professional tune thrown in there. I'd still love to get it properly reflashed instead of the power commander, but still nobody's able to do a reflash that I've heard of so far, so maybe we'll keep trying for that. And then what else? I'm trying to remember. I have a whole long list of things at home for what we're doing to all of the bikes, but nothing is coming to mind right now. Like I said, the main goal for all of the bikes, the Rebel 1100 especially, is just riding the crap out of them this year. Maybe a track day here or there, some really long trips, so get excited for that. And then you may also be noticing there's a bike missing from here, and that would be the Grom. You may have seen my live stream, I don't know, a few months ago, but I actually put a stunt cage on the back of that. So I do plan on riding that some more and learning how to wheelie a bit, so that should be fun. And then of course, you also can't forget, And 
what's the plan with the Miata, you might ask? I said it in the last video, some of you guys thought I was kidding, but the plan is to sell it. Oh, I can't be out here for too long, you guys might see the uh, surprise, the new bike. But yes, the plan actually is to sell the Miata. As much fun as this thing is, it's just not practical by any means. So, unless I win the lottery somehow, and I come across a bunch of money where I can afford some cheap truck to get around in and haul the bikes and everything like that, the Miata has to go, and today is definitely a testament to that, because I had to rent a U-Haul van to go pick up a bike, and that cost me an extra 120 bucks or something like that, which every time I have to pick up a bike, if it costs me that much extra, why do I not just have a truck in the first place? So the Miata has to go, maybe a track day before then, but I really doubt it. If any of you have $6,500 right now, and you want a Miata already set up for HPDE road racing, holler at your boy. But uh, yeah, that's gonna do it for today's video. Just wanted to show you guys moving out of the old space and into the new, bigger, and better space. We're still on the search for a garage, though, so if you guys have any leads for a legit garage in Annapolis, let me know. And leave a comment letting me know what you think about the quality of the new camera. I'm kind of on the fence. It's more of a pain in the ass to film with because the angle isn't as wide angle, so I have to have a super long selfie stick, and I look back at some of the footage and it looked like I was out of focus and the background was in focus. I don't know if it's worth the trouble or if I should just go back to my iPhone and a GoPro. Let me know. Other than that, I will catch y'all on the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Shout out to the Patreon members, of course, and the Patreon members at the time of this video coming out, they already know what the new bike is and you guys won't see it until next week. Maybe the week after, who knows? So if you want behind the scenes access, it is the best way to support the channel as well. Check out patreon.com slash life of Birch. You can pledge your monthly amount. But if you can't help out in that way, I get it. We're all broke. You can also support the channel by liking, commenting, and subscribing. I'll catch you on the next one. Get stoked for all the big things to come this year. We're kicking it off right. Love you guys. Peace. I don't even want to touch the lens and get it dirty. It's so nice. Oh, so basic. Hope you play this. Damn, I prayed it. Nice song, yeah. I be Candace, all souls fake it, pay those ay, placements, ay, fuck shit ay. And I'm still waiting on a brighter day It's been a minute, been rough many times more And I'm kicking rocks to a sky of grey Praying hard, talk to me for I'm done for